from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, has lockdown life made you more or less healthy? We have got some answers and tips if you need some help. We've also got news on how you could join Team Mostar, more hot or not World Tour team kits. Plus, we hear from Connor Zwift as he embarks on week one of his training plan. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that Tom de Moulin will take a break from bike racing. Yeah, one of the biggest names and most talented riders has said that he's been grappling with a loss of perspective and direction and so is stepping away from the sport for an unknown period of time. It's a brave decision, yeah. isn't it? And we hope he finds his way and selfishly that he does come back to the sport at some point as well. Absolutely. Now, we also learned this week that Australian pros made the scaled down season opener, the Santos Festival of Cycling, normally the Tour Down Under, quite the spectacle. They did, yes, particularly crowning the first ever queen of Willunga. Sarah Giganti absolutely crushed the race, proving that the Tibco Silicon Valley Bank rider is one of the hottest prospects in the world right now. Uh, let's hope she gets the race a little more, potentially in big races in Europe this year. That's right, because yeah, last year she spent 14 weeks in lockdown during the Australian winter, instead of racing across the world, but she emerged from her season of e-racing and indoor training sessions seemingly fitter and stronger than ever. She's definitely one of the biggest talents out there in the world of cycling at the moment, isn't she? A good news story, that, to emerge from lockdown restrictions. That and the fact that Australia is largely free from COVID, <laughs> yeah. but then that's another story, yeah. isn't it? It does seem, though, that lockdown has affected us all as cyclists in very different ways. It has, yeah. yeah. Last week, I tweeted a poll asking people whether they felt they'd become more or less healthy during lockdown, and the results we're very surprising, actually, almost a complete split down the middle. Yeah, I was really interested in that. I mean, that was the only reason I replied to your tweet, was so I could actually find out the results. But what was super interesting, it was that how many of the answers, whether they were more or less healthy, seemed to come down to commuting. The theme seemed to be that if you were used to commuting to and from work by bike, then it was really hard to find the motivation to replicate that when working from home. It's fair enough. I guess, really, isn't it? I mean, getting changed and showered twice a day to ride from and then back to your own house <laughs> would take quite a high level of commitment, really, wouldn't it? Even as a professional rider. Right, yeah. Uh, strange in some ways that we need to get from A to B and then back to A again, because that process makes it mentally much easier to deal with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Whereas on the other side of the coin, people who had a lengthy commute on public transport or in a car, who were then forced to work from home, could not believe how much time they had on their hands to exercise each day and so felt generally healthier. Yeah, there was a real divide on that one. I noticed that in the replies as well. Personally, as you know, so I live about 90 minutes drive away from the office here in Bath. I know that's not particularly environmentally friendly, although I don't have to come in every day of the week. Uh, but with my family and Lorraine's family both near where we are at the moment, the kids both settled in at school, we've just never made the uh, move up this way basically, whereas you are almost the perfect bike commuting distance from the office, aren't you? Yeah, 20 kilometres. So in theory, you should be leading a healthier lifestyle, whereas I should be the opposite, I guess. Well, I think we all know about your current level of health based on the recent two versus one, four versus one, and three versus one in the middle results, which you won, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, I'd personally say that during lockdown one, I was less healthy, uh, even though the weather was great, strangely, back then. Uh, but in lockdown two, I have got healthier, despite the lack of daylight hours and the cold, wet weather. I've just managed to get myself into a bit more, more of a routine during lockdown two. And, sorry to mention this word on the channel. Go on, what? I've been running quite a lot. Uh, running most evenings, God. in fact. So Jude comes out with me for the first three kilometres, then I carry on for a few k's after that. I've also managed to reduce how many beers I'm having each week and cut down a few days of that as well. And also sleeping very well. I don't have to get up quite as early. I don't feel like I know this man sat next to me right now. Um, we've also actually seen from the WHOOP data from Ollie, Hank and Connor that quality of sleep should improve as well, shouldn't it? When you Cut down on alcohol. Mm. Yeah, I have felt like I've been sleeping better. You um, look more radiant, that's for sure. Oh, thank you, mate. Yeah, I'd assumed 
as had everyone actually, that it was the hair dye. But um, anyway, <laughs> I should probably bring this back on topic as this is the Global Cycling Network uh, and you've been talking about running, pubs and beer. Um, for me, although my commuting by bike has taken a hit, I think I've made up for that by getting addicted to evening Zwift races. You are really, really into them actually, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am actually, I really am. I mean, I genuinely get off my bike after a indoor training session or Zwift race, a completely different person to the one that hopped on it. And I don't mean like knackered, I mean happier. Is this how you justify to your wife that you're using the time after your kid has gone to bed to go on to a Zwift race as opposed to spending it with her? Uh, well, kind of, yeah. As you well know, uh, if I've not ridden my bike for a while, uh, I'm basically pushed onto my bike because I'm unbearable to be around. <laughs> not, you know, I'm not grumpy or anything, I'm just a little bit twitchy, mm. you know? There must also be the five versus one in the back of your mind at the moment, something back, to train for. Back of my mind and front and centre, mate. Goals are important, after all. Um, so anyway, despite us using, losing my regular commute by bike, I, I think I'm certainly feeling as healthy during lockdown if not healthier. It's high fives all around between us two then. Well it is, except except it's not all rosy though, is it? I mean like, everything needs to be qualified during lockdown with a slight reduction in usual standards. Mm. Okay is the new great, after all. Mm. Yes, I think we all need as much help as we can get at the moment, don't we? So let's share with you a few simple tips we've heard that might make a difference to some people out there. Yeah, right, number one, prioritise exercise and me time, because it is really important. Going for an hour's ride isn't a luxury, it might be a need, so don't feel guilty about it. And if you need a goal to make you get out the door or onto the indoor trainer, just make one. Uh, there might not be many events to work towards at the moment, but that does not mean you can't make your own goals, be they fitness related, mileage related, weight related, basically whatever is going to motivate you, anything that's going to be in the back of your mind as something to work towards, a bit like size five versus one. Oh yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, it could be a Strava segment, couldn't it? Maybe set up a local loop that you enjoy and then work to set your own PB. If the segment's complicated enough, you'd probably be the KOM or QOM as well. And then maybe even get your mates to come and have a pop as well. Make it like a, an unofficial mates race. Mm. And perhaps you could make some plans for later in the year. Not necessarily organised events, because there aren't many of them right now, but plan your own epic ride that you could go and do when the rules do finally relax. Yeah, another good tip is to take your group rides virtual. So the same psychology applies. If something's in the diary and people are counting on you, you will be much less likely to bail on your ride. So it's a great motivational trick in normal times and it still works in the virtual world, doesn't it? You set up a video call, choose your riding software, on Zwift, for example, you set up a meetup really easily, and you can even select the non-drop option, so you can all ride at your own pace, but stay together. Presumably, Ollie has been selecting that option on his Zwift group, right? He was he? the one who told me about the non-drop option. Well, he does option. seem yeah. happier for it. He doesn't does, he? doesn't he? It's nice not to get dropped, <laughs> isn't it? And now, lastly, in terms of motivation and group rides, you could do much worse than join Connor twice a week on his eight-week get fit training plan. Exactly. Speaking of which, let's now hand you over to Connor Zwift, as we've now renamed him. Yeah. Do you think Connor Swift will be a bit annoyed? Nah, he'll be all right. He's a nice guy, Connor Swift. He is actually a nice guy, yeah. Okay, so my seven weeks of structured training on Zwift has begun. Greg Henderson is whipping me into shape with the training that he has prescribed. Now, if you missed Saturday's video, we worked out that I've lost around 20% of my fitness from when I was racing in a bit of an impromptu race up the Innsbruck KOM over on Zwift. Now, I wasn't actually too displeased with that. I was pretty happy with that, actually. I thought I'd have lost a bit more. Um, I've been enjoying my riding, but I haven't been putting any kind of structure in. So I'm really happy to kind of get involved with this plan and get training again and see where I can end up in seven weeks time. Oh, no pain, no gain. It's just, it feels nice to have that kind of routine again. Shorter in 10 sessions, I don't have to commit to kind of five or six hours on the bike. I can, you know, jump on for 50 minutes an hour and, you know, really get the most out of each session, really just go full gas and enjoy it. And I think that really gets the endorphins flowing as well. Now, today was my FTP test. So that's to get my kind of baseline values done, which I'll input into the plan so that I make sure I'm riding at the correct intensity. I really recommend you do the same. So there is a shorter FTP test you can do on Zwift, which it's really great actually, it guides you through the session, you basically go 20 minutes as hard as you can, but Swift will give you some prompts to make sure you're kind of getting the most out of yourself and you're not riding too easy. So I actually managed 370 watts for 20 minutes, which means my FTP is 352, so 
to input that number into the plan, make sure all my sessions are at the correct intensity. Now, 352 is a bit down on where I was when I was racing. I'd normally be around 430, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. There's room for improvement, which is what this plan's all about. And if you are joining me in this, don't fret about you know not being a pro or not having amazing numbers. It's not about that. It's just about getting some structure into your training, enjoying your riding, and you know being in this all together and seeing where we can end up in seven weeks' time, both mentally and physically. Just push ourselves a little bit and get fitter. It's not about you know breaking you know records or anything like that. It's just about enjoying some training on our bikes. I tell you what, it feels great to be back. Great to be back in some training. I'm going to be leading a workout on Thursday, the first one, at 9.30am GMT. So if you can make that time, please do join me. It's going to be about 50 minutes long. If you can't make that time slot, there's going to be four other sessions available throughout the day. Then on Saturday, I'm going to go for a little ride with Jesse. And on Sunday, I'm going to do a race on Zwift. So I'm going to do a Crit City race at 7.30am GMT. So if you are available then, please do join me. And don't fret it if you can't make any of the time slots that I'm saying because I will mix it up a bit. I will jump on some different workouts throughout the day and make sure I can try and ride in some different time zones. And right now, <laughs> I'm a little bit out of breath off my Peter. So I'm gonna get a shower and look forward to Thursday morning session. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you on Thursday. Next up, it's GCN Inspiration. I'm sure you all know how to enter, but I'll remind you anyway. All you've got to do is upload your best cycling related photo or video to the GCN app, at which point we will choose our favourite three each week. And we've got some belters. We do indeed. Yeah, in third place this week, winning a copy of the GCN book, Endurance, How to Ride Further, we have this. And it is a video, Dan. A video? And I'm going to be honest with you. The video itself is not that great, but it's truly inspirational because it's one of the greatest climbs in the world and the sun is out and the sky is blue and there's like, well, just watch it, look. See in the background. I mean, that makes you want to go abroad where the sun is out and it's a bit warmer and the roads are better, doesn't it? Yeah. Or just to have some sunshine, to be honest, yeah. without it being minus one. Yeah. Uh, right, yeah, great video there. Uh, well done to you. Second place this week gets themselves an endurance how to write further book, plus the GCN Word logo t shirt, uh, Stargazer in Silver, apparently. Uh, and that goes to Christopher A. Cat with this uh, Linus Above the Clouds. In May 2020, Linus, uh, 15 years old, imagined a road bike race but mountains. Uh, we did this ride for the first time that day. The complete route, about 35 kilometres, multiple views of breathtaking mountains guaranteed. And that, I've said before on GC Inspiration how much I like getting above the clouds and seeing photos of that. I mean, that is one of the best examples I've ever seen. That is a truly inspirational photo as well, isn't it? I mean, that really is. Uh, well done, Linus. You're looking every bit the pro as well there. It does, doesn't he? That's, uh, oh, wow. Matt, how, how far away does that feel We, like we deliberately chose chosen some sunshine to get a start <laughs> of Jesus inspiration this week. We have, yeah, because first place is also sunshine, although you wouldn't necessarily know apart from the shadow on there. Sent in by Clam Tony. Um, who says, uh, climbing Seven Sisters, took a break, snapped some photos of this stretch of the Seven Sisters climb. Lucky to have this and so many other amazing climbs right out the front door. It doesn't hurt that on this day in January, it was 18 degrees as well. Look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. I haven't mm. actually said what Clam Tony's going to win either yet. Apologies, yeah. Clam Tony, you will win. A cool red sweatshirt, uh, endurance book, and also a GCN Word logo t-shirt. Decent prize at the moment, so make sure you get involved over on the GCN Absolutely. app next week. Uh, yeah, so you were complaining about how cold you were on the way into work this morning riding, weren't you? But we, we'd be nice. We'd, we'd love to have some 18 degree weather at the moment. A couple of months to wait. It won't be long. I went outside last night at 5 p.m. and it was still light. We're getting there. We're on the way. Spring is in the air, almost. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we're going to start with news of Cycling Shorts. I just love it when that happens. I think that's the third week in a row mm -hmm. that Cycling Shorts has started with Cycling Shorts. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Team Quebec at Assos was one of the final World Tour teams to release their new team kit, missing our annual Hot or Not video a couple of weeks ago on GCN Racing. But we'll let them off because they were running a competition asking their fans to design it for them. Yeah, the results are in. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Here we go. Ooh. Hot or not? 
It's a hot from me, I think. I think it's cool. That's a hot from me as well. I'm not sure about the non-matching stems on the bikes, though. Oh, that's what you've been... I didn't even notice the non-matching stems. Well, it looks like it. Uh, anyway, they weren't the only World Tour team to release a new kit last week. No, because they weren't. Canyon SRAM, who often win this competition, uh, basically the coolest kit in the peloton since the launch of the team in 2016. Can they still be at the top after this? Yes! Hot! In fact, they look more like superheroes than ever this year. I'd agree. Yeah. Right, moving on. Elsewhere, there has been a bit of controversy in the cycling clothing world. Uh, for many, rainbow bands are something that you earn the right to wear after becoming a world champion cyclist. Only those in titles who'd wear it, but now the UCI and Santini have just launched a new rainbow bands range to honour the rainbow jersey of the UCI. Yeah, now it's very subtle. Very discreet, uh, dare I say classy, even Dan. But the question is, should you wear it? I mean, I like the kit, it looks cool, but I, I couldn't wear it, it just doesn't feel right. Mm. Well, I'm not sure. Anyway, let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Uh, now though, we're gonna move on to Phil Guyman, the best climber in the world, uh, who unfortunately has just failed to take the Everesting world record back. Yeah. Uh, that he held once for a weekend, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, apparently, Dan, the weather was too hot, uh, which frankly, Phil, where I'm sitting right now, um, <laughs> sounds blooming nice, so stop complaining. And yes, Canada, I know that minus one degree C is not anything to complain about either, but still. Mm. Uh, Phil is, of course, a retired pro racer from a few years ago and has kept himself admirably fit over he the has, last unlike years. Connor. <laughs> True, but they will be joined, finally, by Alejandro Valverde, who's announced that 2021 is going to be his last year as a pro cyclist, hanging up his racing wheels at the grand old age of 41, older than me. Sorry. Even older than you, yeah. And now sticking with Valverde's team, Movistar, uh, they've just announced that they're launching a dedicated e-sports team. And what's seriously cool is that to get a place on the team, they're running a series of qualifying races, ultimately culminating in just five men and five women getting selected for it. You're then going to get all the kit, uh, so all the gear side, but probably also an idea. Well, yeah. Instance, uh, coaching support, nutritional support, and get to go on team training counts, which sounds amazing. It does sound awesome, doesn't it? To find out more, uh, just click on the link in the description beneath this video. Good luck. Uh, sticking with Zwift for just a minute, their latest update to the game now allows you to choose a black hairstyle, which is a welcome touch, but also about time, I guess, really. And also, you're now able to use the steering function of your Wahoo kicker. Two. Very worthy bits of news there, but wildly unrelated, aren't they? They are unrelated, uh, and yeah. Equally wildly unrelated, but also important, uh, is this one. So here in the UK, we have a thriving time trial racing scene, or we did have pre-COVID, um, and it's run by a national governing body called the CTT. Now, last autumn, there was controversy over vastly unequal prize money between men and women at certain events. Mm, a controversy that sparked a petition that garnered 4,100 signatures. Now, CTT have just announced their actions off the back of it. 860 very well-crafted words that sound good, but basically say, nah. Not our problem, mate. Well, yeah. So apparently, they say the board cannot mandate equal prize money, which is weird because I would have thought that's exactly what they could do. Um, but they also say that they don't think that equal prize money would fix the problem anyway. Which seems like it's missing the point, really, just slightly, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, yes, it won't fix cycling problem with diversity, but it would help. Yes. Uh, anyway, CTT are not alone in this, but it's a shame, really, that they miss this opportunity to lead by example, in my opinion. It does feel like that, doesn't it? Uh, right, let's finish cycling shorts with something a little bit more positive, shall we? In some parts of the world, they have dealt so well with the coronavirus pandemic that life is continuing Pretty much as normal, and isn't I it? I am jealous oh. about it, Si. Uh, this includes New Zealand, of course, and so last weekend, the Gravel and Tire Classic took place, uh, with Aaron Gates and Olivia Ray taking victory in the men's and women races, respectively. Uh, so we'll leave you with a short glimpse into what normal life looks like, just so we can all reminisce. Normal life and summer. It's like a double whammy, isn't it? Hack forward slash bodge of the week now. I finished last week's segment by pleading with you to send some bodges in. <laughs> nice. So we'll see if you've come up trumps. Uh, but we're going to start with this one from Wado. Wado! Oakley refresh. After seeing Ollie's vid on spraying sunglasses, I decided to give it a bash. Decided on a clean white look to complement my helmet. Wow, you really pushed the boat out with design and creativity, Wado. <laughs> I think... Uh... They didn't look that bad to start with the Well, green, they didn't. Did they? they didn't really, did they? They do look fresher, though. All white. Look yeah, cool. I mean, it's definitely not a bodge, is it? But, no. you know, I, I don't hesitate from saying hack, because, you know. Well, it looks all white. 
<laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Oh uh, I'd say, I, I would say hack as well. And 82% of the public voted hack. Well, there we go then. Well, there we go. Right, next up we've got this one from uh, Samo. Samo31, <laughs> uh, who said, uh, here is a home for my propel. When I asked a friend who is a blacksmith uh, if they can give me a bracket, <laughs> we're going down this route again. I thought we were just delegating sentry uh, yeah, acts and I, uh, the last couple of weeks. You know, I made my own bed the other day. I got a mate called Ikea to, uh, to make <laughs> me a bed. No, come on, guys. We can't have this. This is, this is not hack or bodge. This is asking someone who's good at something to make you something mm. and buying it, surely. Gave him a few measurements and this is what he gave me. <laughs> Please uh, deem my mate's uh, craftsmanship hack or bodge. Well, uh, let's let's um, let's base the hack and bodge on his friend's. Craftsmanship. Well, yes, your friend uh, has hacked you uh, a very nice uh, bike mount. Yeah. Just wonder whether it could do with a rubber covering to stop you from uh, scratching your cranks or crank. Well, maybe it's a bodge then. If a professional blacksmith can't can't deliver a, a perfect. <laughs> Well, we're going, with, we're going with Bodge then for that one, because yep, it's not you. 13% uh, said Bodge, though, so uh, right, 87% you're right. Well done. Uh, right, moving on, we had this one coming from Dominic488, 200mm monster. Whoa. Uh, when my road bike got written off, I created this monster for my work commute. The only <laughs> bike that I had uh, that I could fit the 55-2 front ring, which looks like it's osymmetric, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, the frame is a 99 orange 222, with 23 mil Michelin tyres on Crank Brothers 29 inch rims. I bet you wouldn't notice how narrow your tyres are if you've got those suspension bad boys no. front and back. Can you imagine what that would feel like riding up a climb? You must get some saddle. looks on your commute. <sighs> You'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but feel that those tri bars, the bar extensions there, aren't going to make you much more aero. No, I think you kind of need a negative stem, don't you? Could you maybe attach it below the head tube? Yeah, like the, I've seen, we've seen that on hacks and bodges before. We have, we? yeah, maybe attach it to the, to the lower fork crown. Well, I'm, I don't know what to say here. It's the only bike that he had left. So is, can we say that that's a bodge? If he, if he had to sort of transform it into something that was commutable on? Personally, I think that's a hack, mate. All right, well, let's go with hack. Yeah, because I can't deem something like that a bodge. So nope. we'll go with hack. Uh, but we're in the minority, 29% oh. bodge. Oh, okay. All right, well, I think that's great. In fact, I think we should probably try and do that. We can make a GCM video. Nick, we can nick one of GMBN's bikes, yeah. can't we? Lands into John O'Groats for Hank on one of them. Oh, I love it. <laughs> absolutely love it. Uh, right, next up, we got this one sent in by uh, Jay Gadfield, uh, who, oh, this looks beautiful, doesn't it? For a start, it's clean, like it's pristine. An internal bike rack for the Doesn't inside of a car. Safe and secure transport for me and my missus's machines. Uh, the rack is made from extruded aluminium sections. I drew it on CAD to make sure the boot closes without touching the hoods. Only mine's wow. rack is removing my seat post. So the mention of CAD surely means this is a hack straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, Not basically. to mention the neatest looking internal to a car I've ever seen in my life anyway. I know. That's uh, remarkable. I like it. I have the feeling that Jay Gadfield is a very tidy person. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Hack from me. Hack uh, from me, 100%. Well, and it's if, not 100% by the public. 97... Who are the 3% that voted bodge on that? <laughs> have a word of yourselves. And, and then when Jay Gadfield, you've finished having a word with them, um, perhaps you could get in touch and you could make one for me. And the boot yeah. of my car. And then we'll submit it. So we, we asked a friend <laughs> to make this for us. What do you reckon? Uh, right, moving on to this from Brownie Ian. Uh, frame tour the Yorkshire picture by Lucy Pittaway. Homemade picture frame to show off one of Lucy Pittaway's fabulous pictures using a local Yorkshire brand carbon rim. With some bits cut out the edge. That's not really I mean, doing it for me, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, generally, when I've got a picture, I choose the same shape for the frame. It would have been alright with a round picture, wouldn't it? Without any spokes. Obscuring the beautiful picture as well. I'm saying bodge. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But weirdly, 56% of you lot said it was a hack. Wow. Okay. I don't get uh, that. Right, well, moving on to this one from Eugene Angel 2. A uh, truing stand. Using my old bike trainer and convert it into a truing stand. Uh, I'm sure we've seen this before. Simple but effective. Uh, yep. Saves you money. Hack from me. Oh, he's a hack for me, probably, as well, let's see. Good. Uh, a couple of bits to mention from last week's show. Firstly, that we missed 
the custom hack V8 engine wine rack behind the person that did the rocker plate. How could Genius. you miss that? Yes, I can't Dan. believe I missed that. Oh, I don't uh, know. And also, apologies to CPU nerd, who I called CPU nerd. <laughs> I saw the comments and thought, yeah, it seemed, I got that slightly wrong, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, make sure you continue to upload your hacks and bodges. Next week's are already on the app for you to vote on, but if you upload them now, they'll be in with a chance of being featured in a couple of weeks' time. Caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. Oh yes, as modelled by Dan there. Uh, all we've got to do is put a witty caption in the comments section down below. We pick a winner each week, although actually, the results from last week, we got two honourable mentions as well. Because um, I mean, Dan's, such was the standard of captions in the comments. Well, you set the standard very low, Dan. With <laughs> we all wish we could find someone who looks at us like Jakob looks at his shoes. Uh, to which John Trounson comes in with, uh, looks like Jakob has found his soulmate. Then, which I liked. Very good. Yes, yeah. uh, Tim Bishop, but Jakob can't stop talking about these shoes. His teammates finally told him to stick a sock in it. <laughs> Brilliant, uh, but. The winner is Swirling Zero with Here's Looking a Chill Kid. Great accent side. Thank adds, you very adds much. That's your repertoire of French. You've got now got New York. Uh, yes, yeah. well done to you, Swirling Zero. Get in touch with us on Facebook with a message and your address. We'll get the bottle sent out to you. This week's image uh, is this one of Audrey Codon Rago. That sounded all right to me, man. Did it? Oh, yeah. with um, Georgia Bronzini. Uh, that's training, not so good. A <laughs> training camp. Uh, I should get you started. I found the missing bolt! <laughs> There's a wahoo element bolt there. Is it a bolt? Today. It's I probably a Rome, Rome actually. Yeah. But anyway. Well, that doesn't work then. We know what you're thinking. Yeah, we know We know where you've gone with that. But, um, well, again, the bar set comfortably low for you all to get over it. But uh, let's, let's have some belters, shall we? Yeah, good luck. We've got a load of comments to get through before we get on to what's coming up on GCN over the next weeks. So let's crack on with that. Get Firstly, through, Dan. Get through. Need... This is the highlight of the show. Well, we've tried to cram a lot of comments into this bit, haven't we? we? Have. Because there were a lot to choose from. So first up, underneath Man on Saddle Hype vid, uh, M2 Dab. That moment Manon realised that it was a biro and not a pencil that she drew on the wall with. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah. And also Hans Schmidt, uh, my way to become athletic in 2021. 1% training, 99% watching GCN videos. There we go. Great idea. Well, it's not really, is it, if you no, want to get not fit? Really. Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll know how to get fit, but you still have to put the work in. Yeah, unless, actually, 1% training, uh, that's like, if you spend, what, 24 hours, 23 hours a day watching DCM videos, could you get to like 1% of a lot? I don't think that would be very good for you to just have one hour sleep a day either, though. No, it wouldn't, would it? All right, just no. scrap that idea, Hans, it's rubbish. Uh, right, under last week's GCN show, um, David Stebbings said, um, you're not a proper cyclist until you've watched 419 GCN shows. That means there are no proper cyclists the world uh, over. Absolutely, <laughs> but... Um, Nobody could have had that level of patience. Yeah. If someone has, if, if one of you out there has actually watched all GCN shows, can you let us know? Because... Um, yeah, that'd be amazing, wouldn't it? I haven't. I only watch the ones I'm in. <laughs> no, I do watch the ones that I'm not in. <laughs> Sometimes watch the ones I'm in. Uh, anyway, moving on from Ian under the same video um, last week's show. Unsurprising that these two old chaps don't know what flossing is. I do know what flossing is actually as well. I do it every night. I do. What's worry worrying though is that I'm so old, Dan, that I can't remember what Ian's referencing in oh, last we, we week's We were show. talking about another comment uh, that talks about Ollie and flossing, but I think it was the context of the word flossing within the sentence that threw us, as opposed to not knowing what flossing is, even yeah. in the dancing sense. So what we're saying, actually, is it was poor grammar that meant that we didn't understand it. Not that yeah. We didn't, yeah. yeah so, not so we're actually much cooler <laughs> than you'd think. <laughs> yeah. uh, meanwhile, Jason Gervin wrote in and said, you'd think Sai's most embarrassing moment would be when he broke the rear wheel hub cassette of that museum bike that Jason was loaning. Was that the Orbea? That was the Orbea, yes. And um, that was quite embarrassing, actually, having to go back to the return that I'd broken. Um, uh, I can't remember whose bike it was now. It won the Vuelta. Yeah. Remember who it was? Yeah, I'm sure you were highly embarrassed to go back and say, I'd had a bit too much power. <laughs> Your bike. That's right. Pedro Delgado might have won the Welsh on it, but didn't stand two minutes with <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, right, and then uh, under Connor's brilliant video on Saturday about just how much fitness he has lost, uh, Hung Tran said, um, hairspray in the eyes, Connor has truly gone Hollywood. You know what, when I watched that video, I t texted Connor at that exact moment and went, hairspray, mate? <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, you weren't the only person hung to mm. uh, think that. Uh, meanwhile, Mr. Luigi, kind of averaged almost 400 watts on this ride and said he'd lost about 20% of his fitness. If I averaged 400 watts, it would mean over 200% improvements in my fitness. Uh, I think it would do for me as well at this point, actually. Yeah, th I mean, there was some big power on show there, wasn't there? Like, well, it, I mean, in, in all seriousness, it's an example of how powerful the top pros are when they're at the height of their game, isn't it? Uh, Sorry yeah. for the pun. Yeah, that's true, actually. Uh, I like that pun. Uh, right, and then finally, under cycling versus running, which burns the most calories? John Manuel puts this very well. Uh, the sport you like more, basically, because you won't do something mm. you don't like as much. Wise so, words, okay. John. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. And wah wah 1013. But if I'm running, I'm either being chased, escaping a fire, or sometimes trying some. Or or someone's trying to steal my bike. Sorry, it would have been better if somebody that could read read it out. Uh, send help. <laughs> Nevertheless, great comment. Uh, anyway, cracking on with what's coming up on the channel. On Wednesday, how to understand cycling jargon. There are a lot of complicated terms, even parts of bikes. Oh, there's yeah. a ridiculous amount of yeah. weird cycling terms, aren't there? Um, even people that have been into cycling for a long time watching this might not know all the jargon to do with bikes and cycling. Uh, but even if you do, pass it on to somebody getting into the sport and it might help them along the way. Indeed. On Thursday, uh, a 30-minute session for you to train along to over on GCN Training, which is high intensity ramps. Ooh, nice. Ramp, the, the word ramp to do with cycling always fills me with fear due to ramp tests. But anyway, Friday, uh, why you shouldn't give up riding in winter. Uh, if you're from New Zealand or Australia, please do not comment about this <laughs> underneath this video. But yeah, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and you're struggling a little bit, it should give you some motivation. Indeed. Uh, on Saturday, we have got, uh, well, as I said, double header, but we've got like a triple header, of course, because of GCN Tech. But on GCN Training, um, Hank has done a video about vegan train tips uh, or nutrition tips, I presume. So that'd be very interesting to see. Uh, and then also on GCN, how much weight would it take before an ex-pro cyclist, in this case Hank, has to get off and walk when uh, when he's trying <laughs> to ride up a hill, which which is another of our attempts to break Hank. So uh, make sure you check that one out. Almost literally in this sense. Yeah, the and then that rucksack. on Sunday, this is a video I cannot wait for. Okay, spinning versus grinding. Who would win a race? Connor stuck in his easiest gear versus Hank stuck in his hardest <laughs> gear. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. I can't either. It's going to be a great video. That Who's one, your money it? on? How hilly was the course? Well, that'd be telling, but I think there were a couple of climbs in it. Are there? Uh, Connor, then, I think. All right, anyway, Hank. we shall find out soon enough because it's coming out on Sunday. Uh, also, just a quick mention for Race Pass because we've not only got the World Championship Cyclocross race if they take place this weekend in Belgium, coming up on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, territory restrictions do apply for that one, so make sure you look to see what's available in your country. But also, no territory restrictions on Sunday for what is the first pro road race in Europe this year, the Grand Prix Marseillaise. Uh, so I probably should have said that one instead of me. But anyway, uh, it's never been televised live before. It is this year, and it is on race pass, so I can't wait to see the peloton rolling along again. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed it all happens, but that's going to be a good weekend. Uh, now, before we leave the GCN show for this week, uh, Jonathan Pontin got in touch to say that Ollie did indeed do a team time trial before four versus one. So he was fibbing, um, but actually Jonathan has photographic and video evidence which is well, kindly supplied. I don't supplied. know if I can believe another word that comes out of Ollie Bridgewood's mouth. Oh, I know, look, here he is, look, with his teammates. Check it out, looking like they've got all the gear. Uh, and here they are, on course, with a real-life video. He hasn't dropped them yet, has he? Like he said No, he in our WhatsApp group, he said it was the other way around in that team yep. time trial because he was doing the dropping. But in that video, as you can see, he sat on the back. What do you do, dropping the last 500 metres after sitting on all day? So there we go. <laughs> Right, um, well that brings us to the end of the GCN show this week, doesn't it? it I hope you've yeah. liked it. If you have done, uh, as ever, we'd love it if you would click on the thumbs up icon just down below.